Um, you ready? Yep. We're on. So, uh, welcome to the uh, school Sunderland Elementary School Committee meeting for November 14th, 2017. And um, I think it's, I don't know if it's officially winter, but it's <laughs> feeling like it. We had the snow flurry even yesterday or the day before. Was Kids are very excited. I bet. Yeah. Uh, you know, bring on the snow. No, uh, I lost a certain amount of snow. I lost my class for 10 minutes. Did you? Oh, right. did the, That's yeah, at the high yeah, school yeah. level. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like outside taking <laughs> pictures. It's right. snowing. Right. So <laughs> magnify that by 5 yeah. or 10 for elementary. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, the minutes from October. relatively um, brief kind of bare bones meeting here in October because of the joint meeting. So uh, motion, motion, motion of the minutes. Motion to approve. You have a second. Can I? I? They look good, but I wasn't there. Uh, you can. Uh, I'll second it. Yeah. You can vote. You uh, actually you don't have to. Uh, um, you can vote to approve. It's not saying like that you. Um, saying that that happened. It's, you're up to you. Um, anyway, all in favor? Against? Abstentions? All right, there we go. <coughs> all right, and then we have financial warrants and statements. Um, and poor Patty is being in Florida right now. <laughs> well, there were eight warrants. For uh, totaling $79,881.03. And then right in front of you. Obviously, if we have um, questions or concerns about the, any of, anything on the financial statements, we could note now and then um, follow up with Patty in the next, you know, in between meetings and then. And resolve it, you know, the next meeting. She'll be back Monday. Yeah. She didn't uh, leave with anything of concern or note at all. Yeah, not with uh, Sandra. Um, any, you want to take a minute more to look? I, Quick look and uh, <coughs> I would look it all up before the, going into the next meeting. Do we do a lot of general repairs to the building? Do you want to take that? Yeah, um, we've been addressing a number of the issues. Um, we've had uh, many door issues, um, exterior door issues. So we've had a carpenter come in and replace a couple doors um, by the custodian's entrance, the cafeteria entrance, and then um, he gave all the other exterior doors a tune-up and it's looking like we're gonna need to replace the hardware for some of them, they're getting a little bit tired. Um, and, and what's happening is that the doors are not shutting all the way mm -hmm. um, after being opened. So um, he lubricated all the fixtures, and uh, they're working a lot better now. But it's they're in need of um, not not completely need new doors, but new hardware. Is that kind of the same issue that Frontier is experiencing too? Yes. Are the same mechanical mm -hmm. issues. Um, the, their doors are closing. Uh, the problem over there it has to do with you know security mostly. Yeah. There's just everyone has a key. What is happening here, too, I think Bob kind of mentioned, and he mentioned it over there, too, like the doors are okay until like this much to the bottom and whatever comes off the ground. So the metal along the sides, they'd like to weld in new pieces mm -hmm. and, you know, there's a little bit of rot going on on the, on the doors. I'm not positive that's happening. I, the bottoms of your doors rotted, your exterior doors. Uh, not, not so much the bottoms of the doors, but just the, the threshold in, in general. Yeah. 
wear uh, and tear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But well, no security issues, right? <coughs> at this point. Well, if if they're not if they're not closing properly, then that's a security issue. True, but we can still lock them. I mean, yes, yes, they're they all lock. Um, but um, when when the pin inside um, doesn't engage with the, when the handle is pushed all the way open, uh, or when it's not pushed all the way open, um, when it when it comes to close at the top, it kind of just gets stuck a little bit. So it's being addressed. All right. Anything down the doors? Not really. It's not really comes out to me at this point. Okay. Um, so uh, while we're on that, um, the financial. Um, so, um, I can follow up with Patty, but I guess if we can, you know, knowing this year is, mm -hmm. is tough, if we can get some ideas in, in December, I know that's ahead of our no. usual schedule. Um, <coughs> and that, um, and that is, I've redone my goals, but that is one of my goals is to take more of the charge in what happens instead of waiting. Um, I have some forms, I meet with the principals every two weeks, and I'd like to get that going. And the okay. first step to that is figuring out who works in the building, every single body in the building, every single person, what the contracted rates are that we need to raise those mm -hmm. uh, salaries, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then where are we from there? What Again, what can we live with and what can we live without? Um, but it's really you as the school committee to direct us. So we can yep. give you some idea, and I'm hoping in December to have some kind of idea where we are. Yeah, I mean, and like if you can give us it in the different areas, like okay. here's where we are. Obviously, it's hugely driven by personnel, but mm -hmm. you know, in terms of what we're expecting increase there, you know, this is in mm -hmm. technology building, blah 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 blah, and, and then we can start to. And so when I did the presentation for the. Um, you know, the uh, bond proposal, um, which is really just to get a discussion going, yep. to get a subcommittee. When I did that, you know, I realized, and, and for you folks, so Frontier Regional has $8,000 a year for their regular maintenance of their building. Mm -hmm. But out of that, 20, 25, I forget the exact numbers, 25, $30,000 of that 80,000 goes to, um, Having the alarms checked, you know, to having all the, you know, the just uh, routine things that have to happen every, every year. Every year that yeah. have to be certified every single year, and then that leaves us with a certain amount. And uh, yeah. consequently, people will say, "Well, there's deferred maintenance," but it's not. It, it's it takes that kind of money just to keep it going. And I know that this summer, um, Bob made a concerted effort at my request and Ben's request, but he brought extra people over. They power washed the building. Right. They did a lot of work, uh, the hallways, and, and um, there was a lot of painting done, a lot of repair, repair in the halls, uh, the walls in the uh, cafeteria. <coughs> so these are the things, when I look at um, Sunderland, they do so much, so well, on very little money. and. It's, we need to, the facility itself needs a yep. lot of attention. <laughs> no, um, you know, uh, budget realities aside, you know, the select board has certainly been, uh, I mean, that's been something that, a drum that they've been beating for years in terms of just overall for the town to, um, you know, t to, to have funds for, because, you know, these capital, um, maintenance projects are, you know, they don't go away, and but we don't put any money really aside from them, and then they, we try to do them out of operating expenses, but it's be so unpredictable. So um, I think to keep, you know, pre presenting them with that information and, 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 and 
have them help us try to see, you know, I mean, along with, like I said, I think for the whole town, you know, an effort to see, you know, in terms of capital, you know, funding that's. I think one of the things that I'd like to do, and, and I've done a lot of reflecting uh, since the last meeting, what I'd like to do, and I don't know how well I'll be able to do it, but I think I, I, I'm up to it. I'd like to be able to explain, you know, to illustrate and explain visually where is the money going. So this is what we have for the school, and we know the school is 70% of the town. We know that. Mm -hmm. But this is what we have for the school. This is the pie. How much is going for personnel? How much is going for maintenance? What about academics? What about all the... Um, uh, the resources, the uh, online uh, subscriptions, you know, what, what about that? What about this and that? And then what leaves, you know, how much does that leave for us to really have discretionary <coughs> spending? Mm -hmm. You know, for things like, um, you know, painting the ceiling or Bruce spoofing up this or... Yeah. Um, and with that, we don't really know until the end of the year how much money left over so you know the what however much money is in the building maintenance line item you know you, you can't really s set that cost early on because other things might come up we um we always estimate the budget um all of you know the regular expenses and then we have an x amount that we have for maintenance however barring any catastrophe like a water heater blowing up that's 15 20 thousand or something like that Bar, barring those things, uh, we do have some funds at the end of the year, and then you tell us, help us figure out how we're going to spend those funds to help the greater good of the building. Um, I think, yeah, I think that kind of that breakdown would be nice. I think the, um, you know, looking at some of these things over time, um, you know, and especially, you know, kind of, uh, you know, on a, on a per, per, you know, per pupil basis, call, you know, throw the number of students we have in the denominator and we know that we've had an num increasing number of students in recent years and, you know, so, so that, um, again, just, you know, just to show that um, it's not like uh, money's being spent crazily here, obviously. So. And I, I, I struggle for a way to tell the stakeholders of Sutherland, the and the, the the select board and the finance committee, what you are able, what you're accomplishing in this building, more than any other building I've ever worked in, what you're accomplishing in this building is amazing, considering the resources you have and the demands you have. Um, what? Well, yeah, and I, I think um, you know. Maybe I got sidetracked in the uh, town meeting last year somehow on, in terms of certain some of the questions that I think led down paths that were probably less productive to spend a lot of time on. Although, you know, when somebody asks a question, you want to answer it. But at the same time, I felt like, you know, the message was we have 35, 40 percent, whatever it was, more kids in this building than we did, you know, a handful of years ago. Hence increase in our costs like it's a direct correlation yeah yeah it's a pretty simple story uh, and somehow you know I felt like by the end of that meeting not, not that you know there's ever a problem getting passing the budget in town meeting I think it you know but but still if I if that was if there were still people in that if, uh, in the end of that meeting who didn't understand why our budget was gone had gone up you know then I mean, you know, some people just will never want to hear it, and then I'm sure I, we could do a better job, you know, just making sure that that story is well heard uh, and understood. And I think I'd like some, um, some more support and advice on how, how can I approach the select committee, the finance committee, and, and help them understand what it is we're doing. I, I'm wondering if they... I think they understand. Yeah. You, you do? I agree. Yeah. yeah. You, you. I do. I mean, I, we, you know, we've had different kinds of relationships with the yeah. Select Board and Finance Committee over the years, but I feel like uh, they understand it very well, and they understand the cost to, to um, uh, you know, 
com cutting, making cuts to the budget when we don't have anything to cut other than, than really cutting services, ma making classes, class sizes, you know, to a size where parents start thinking about choicing their kids out. And we went, you know, and they know what happened when we went through that the last time, so. I'm hoping for a much better budget year. Yeah, let's, yeah, I mean, and that's why, I think, I, you know, I want to be, I don't want to be doom and gloom right now, uh, because I think, you know, there's a lot of time to get ahead of it and, and, and make it work well. Um, but but I, I just think because of the tough situation, we got to start early. And I know that's tricky because there's all kinds of information that we don't get until further down the road. And we'll have no idea what we're going to get from the state. Um, and we just have to guess, you know, make our best guess and things like that. I think whatever approach that we take or you take or whatever, the, the breakdown presentation you were kind of alluding to, I think it would be important to have a balanced approach of uh, explaining what the needs are, but also highlighting what the accomplishments are. I think that's one of the things mm -hmm. that we, we had talked about with Frontier. <coughs> when we were asking, yeah. you know, looking for this amount of money, we, we highlighted all the needs. And uh, it almost came off like we weren't doing anything. Yeah. The building was almost like falling apart when we, they were like, so I think all the improvements that have been made over yeah. the last few years, I think would also be important to, to highlight. So we, we do need this, but it's not as if we are being remiss in our duties from year to year. Right. Year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good point. And, 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 and then highlight the accomplishments of, you know, the school in general. Yeah, I would say both academically and then yeah. in terms yes. of like capital improvements. What we've done, yeah. Um, thank you. And, and I, I, that's great advice. Because I did, um, we did a big presentation and it went, I thought, very, fairly well, quite mm -hmm. well. But it's true that it kind of just focused on the negative, but my whole point was we need to see what it looks like. <laughs> but you know, we, I guess, you know, it's hard, you know, I know and I take for granted that we're, that, that this is a wonderful district, Union 38, Frontier, better than wonderful, we're, we are, I would say, stars in, mm -hmm. in this area. And we provide not only, you know, the um, athletics, but we have great fun, incredible fine arts, and amazing um, academics. Our academics are right out there. Uh, but it's something that I might take for granted. For whatever reason, um, you know, I just, Sunderland is the one that just, it just touches me, I don't know. But you're right, and I think I could definitely make sure to put that stuff in there. Well, I think, you know, we've got to just, Mm -hmm. you know, it just, we just don't want to, we, we, we want to build on what we've been doing <laughs> and, uh, and then not, not take the legs out from under it and, and then have to, you know, rebuild all over again. I've been meeting with the four town administrators and Sherry is great and she's a wonderful, um, Sherry Patch is a wonderful mm -hmm. uh, resource for me. And she also indicated that um, they, they want to see more than just a bunch of numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, they really want to understand what it is, and, and Waitley has also mm -hmm. asked for that. Mm -hmm. What is it that we do? What is it really, you know, about? And um, she really wanted more of a narrative story to go with the numbers. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing that. And, uh, and I think that we, you know, like some of the presentations that we get here in school committee over the years, you know, it's kind of very short versions of that, but like, you know, what, you know, happens in terms of curriculum in the school, I mean, you know, and, and keeping up with, you know, curriculum changes and curriculum requirements and things like that, and, you know, those kinds of stories that people don't, you know, again, it just kind of goes under the radar and nobody even thinks about all that work that has to be done, um, you know, by, by administrators and teachers and, um, Unless you see an article in the newspaper that shows Sunderland scores <laughs> right up there, you know, but the MCAS is only one, yeah. know, one, one assessment that we do beautifully, but uh, it's true. Unless you're in the building, you don't really know um, the relationships these people have. And I've spoken to this before, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I was outside in the <clears throat> spring, and just the relationships of the adults bringing the children onto the bus, and, yeah. you know, that kind of caring and that personal kind of connection that they have with the kids and just the, the whole staff, the way they work together. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I, uh, 
I will really work on a presentation that really uh, tries to express all of that, the human piece as well as what we're doing with the money. And I will be, I will ask for all advice and input. Yeah, I was going to just say. Before it goes on the road. <laughs> Let us know how we can Yes, thank you, that. yes. All right. Um, public comment. Did, are you here for public comment or to, to uh, uh, or just, I mean, well, glad that you're here. <laughs> Let me say that just for starters. Uh, my name is Peter Gagarin, and I am, I guess I'd say I'm interested in your vacant spot on the school committee. All right. And I don't know whether you got somebody lined up or not because usually the process is somebody twists somebody's arm. Yeah. And, uh, That's usually what it comes down to. Sign up. Uh, or, so I didn't know whether you already had that problem taken care of or not. Uh, um, my my background is very briefly is that uh, I've lived in town for thirty three years. Um, have no kids. So I, I've never been a parent. Um, I have been involved in town affairs uh, fairly extensively. I was uh, on the finance committee in the 1990s for seven years and chairman of it for five. So I dealt with a lot of school budgets. Um, and then after I got, there were term limits there, so I got off of that. And then I was on the school council, not the school committee, but the school council for Mm -hmm. about four years as a community, one of the community members. I, I don't know if the rules are still the same, but you had to have a couple of community members. Yep. And one of those, and then I got off of that, and I got talked into being on the library building committee and was deeply involved in building the new library, but then the new library, that, uh, I think it was 2004 we finished it, and then I, basically things got busy enough for me to work in the wintertime because I had a tax business and so the wintertime was the worst time and I just said, okay, that's it for town stuff. I'm not doing town stuff for a while and I'm now retired so I thought, I've been sort of thinking about it and I have no interest in trying to get on the board of selectmen and I used to run the finance committee but a lot has changed and I, I, I don't think they're at all effective currently but I don't want to put out the effort to get involved. I mean, I've sort of been there and done that, and I'm not sure I want to. It was a lot, when I was on it, it was, I spent a lot of time on it, and um, because that's what was needed, and mm -hmm. so on. Um, I've always had an interest in the school. I thought the school was an important part of the town. I thought the school was, um, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a key part of the town, and it's important that, that people think positively about the school and um, I also always felt when I was on the finance committee that I w it was really frustrating dealing with the school budget here and even more frustrating dealing with the frontier school budget and that was more frustrating because the rules that if three out of four towns passed the budget you were stuck regardless and it just Drove, drove us nuts in terms of trying to plan, but in terms of the elementary school budget, it was frustrating because the, um, it's a situation where, I always thought a budget was, budget served a couple of different purposes, and one was just, you know, legally a budget, you set up line items, and this is what you are allowed to spend, and if you spend more than this without, you know, uh, proper approvals, you've broken the law. To, you know, to a certain extent. I don't. I mean, I, we never had that case, but basically, this is what you're allowed to spend, and um, you set up a budget accordingly with the proper, you know, breakdown into categories. You don't want to go too far down, but you want to go somewhat down, so you have the amount of control. Because then, budget is also a management tool, and so you have the proper way of both controlling expenditures, but also managing how you. Uh, you run the operation and setting priorities and um, while that all may take place within the school operation and the school committee and the uh, central office, uh, all those procedures in terms of running the budget here uh, for the school over the course of a year, the, uh, from the uh, 
point of view of the finance committee, or I think the Schleckman would be the same way, there was a sense that, you know, there was one number. You got one number, which was the line. That's all we vote on is one number for the school for the year. And that's all you have. And from a sort of you know, management point of view, that's a very unsatisfying situation. And I think it actually, you know, I'm not saying that needs to change or anything because that's the way it is. So you accept that. But I think that there are times when the school doesn't do itself a service in the way it, um, you know, it, it, it carefully guards its, its own ability to change whatever it wants to change within the budget. And I think sometimes it does a disservice because it doesn't, you know, nobody else then owns these problems. You have a problem, it's your problem, basically, you know, as the year goes on, oops, you're out of money, well, that's your problem, you got the budget, you know, you figure out how to move the money around. Whereas, to the extent that, you know, other uh, folks in town, the selectmen and the finance committee especially, you know, own the problem, they've been involved in it, they, they've been kept in, in the loop, then their sense of, you know, sharing the problem of figuring out how you're going to deal with it is significantly different and I think significantly better. Um, when we were building the library, uh, we, and the actual building was a five-year project, but the, only, the building was actually just in a 12-month period. And, and uh, we had construction meetings once a week with the uh, architects and the builders, and myself and the chair of the committee would go to those construction meetings, and I would then sit down, it was like Wednesday early afternoon, and then I'd sit down, and by Wednesday evening I would have sent a letter to the selectmen every week saying, here's what's going on, here are the issues we're facing, um, you know, here's, here's what's going well, here's what problems we're having, so on. So just each week, you know, an update. And so, and then I'd go in an actual meeting maybe every, you know, month or month and a half or something like that. But then when we had any, you know, if we, if we ran into problems, they were already on board because they, they were, you know, they were part of it, even though they weren't running the project, the building committee was running the project. And I think that to me was, it was extraordinarily useful keeping them in the loop. Um, so when I heard your discussion a few minutes ago about, you know, how to get what essentially boils down to more support for your budget and more support for your program, um, if the approach is to, um, you know, at some point say, well, you know, as long as things are going well, it's our budget and, and uh, you know, you, sorry, by law, we're the only ones you get to decide, but then whoops, when something goes bad, now we, you know, well, okay, we need more money, and sorry, we're, but you don't get to say anything about how we got here, is, a, is not really the most productive way to do business. And, you know, like many things in, in, uh, of this sort, it takes more work to get other people on board, okay? And it takes some time giving up your own sense of authority, okay? but often the rewards are significant in, in, in what happens when crunch time comes. So anyway, these are just some of my thoughts. I have a interest in being on the school committee. If you have somebody else, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I'll probably be one of these things like, thank God I don't have to do that. Well, um, I, but, you know, I just, so that's why I'm here. I can't speak, uh, uh, you know, for certain, but as far as I know, I think we would be in that position you described about going out and finding some arms to twist. <laughs> uh, so, so, and so, certainly welcome the the uh, you know putting yourself up. And, and I think the process is we'll be having a, um, be a joint, joint exactly meeting. joint meeting with the select right. select board and and uh, and then um, so knowing that you would be willing to to serve um, be a good piece of it for me, you know. Welcome. So I don't know what you, you need something in writing or anything. I think that might be the case. It might be good to, um, yeah. Wendy would know yeah. for sure. I, 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 if you I, don't. I believe it's a, a letter of interest submitted to the town administrator. Okay. Uh, I, actually, I didn't share that in the minute here indicating anything about the process. I, I think yeah. something may have just gone out yesterday. Yes. Yeah. And this like board meeting minutes of I've been put up on the web for the last few months. So, um, yeah, something was posted. I think I could try to find it. 
Um, you don't have to now. I can go check it down. But yeah, definitely um, try to see Sherry Patch and, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and yeah. I know what you're doing there. Yeah, good. Um, Great. And I think, you know, philosophically, uh, well, it doesn't necessarily matter, but, it, but, but, but we're in agreement in terms of, I think, you know, it's, it's a joint project with the whole town uh, here and, and uh, certainly as, you know, chair of the committee, I've, I've tried to um, reinforce that, you know, at every step of the way and um, try to work closely with the select board and, you know, the finance committee as much as possible and, and you know, and try to, and, you know, and with, you know, a very open book um, and, uh, you know, Patty's been, you know, working with us to like, on all the different ways of, of showing the, the financial information. So, I mean, once upon a time when I first started, things were already netted out of other sources of funding. Um, which drove me crazy because then all of a sudden when those fun sources of funding went away and that budget line went like that and people are like, well, I would saw that increase. And it wasn't actually an increase in the cost. It was just that some other source of funding. So things like that, you know, just to have, you know, as much transparency for everybody, including us here um, to, to best manage this and, and work together on, on long-term solutions to challenges we have and, 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 and like you said, prioritize um, you know, the best we can, so. I'll go with Fire Town Hall. Yeah, thanks. So that's, only, that's my public comment. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> all right. Oh. Uh, all right, unfinished business. Uh, we have <laughs> update on the school committee member vacancy. <laughs> uh, we anticipated our agenda. Um, so and I, and so the update I think that update is to say that uh, something has been posted. Um, did you, do you have yeah, officially it, with it? Um, it took a while to get um, the official um, resignation, and so once we got that, Wendy got right into uh, right into gear and has advertised the school, you know the, the school committee position and it did it. it came out yesterday or the day before so it is out asking for if anyone would be interested in um, putting their name in so it should be going to town hall town website and channel 15 at least and i sent a message to the parent community that's right, yeah. as well oh yeah that's yeah. right yeah yeah um so i i have a question yeah um, and I don't know if you don't if you want to make this decision after we're a complete committee, but uh, the question I have from Donna Hathaway is, did we appoint? Did you appoint a collaborative uh, to the collaborative educational services a liaison for that? That was uh, our previous member. Right. So no, we haven't replaced okay. that yet. Do you want to wait until? I think so. Okay, we can wait. That's fine. Thank you. Yeah, I thought about that too. I think that's the only committee she was also right. Yeah. Yes, Maisie is now a, a voting member for Union 38. Mm -hmm. And she's school council. Yep. Greg is on the policy review committee. <coughs> okay. And then um, for new business, uh, Discuss a recommendation from superintendent con to convene an advisory subcommittee to meet roughly three times a year to advise her on goal development, mid-cycle, and year-end progress on meeting the goals. I, I've asked um, Greg if he would be uh, the uh, Sunderland uh, rep on the, stu the superintendent's advisory committee. The reason why I asked for this, um, this subcommittee is um, Last year when I was new, I wrote eight goals and uh, then I gave everyone a binder on all, you know, and how I addressed all the four dimensions of the <coughs> job and every single element. And, and so it was just kind of overwhelming and my feedback and my sense was too much, too much. Mm -hmm. And make those goals simpler, more simple. 
So I did. And um, what had happened is, uh, not understanding, I have, you know, I have student goals and then district goals and then professional goals. So the student goals is, well, this doesn't look like, you know, and you have anything to do with it. Well, you're not doing the work. Well, no, because I'm the instructional leader. I, I do. Everything comes from me. But the, the question was more on the budget and to get more um, involved. And we just had this discussion. Um, last year, my first year, uh, I watched how it was handled here. I was trained. I was an assistant superintendent. I was trained differently. Uh, to do budgets differently and um, to kind of come at them in a different way. And, but I, there's a long, a long um, tradition of doing, doing it this way. And so I was really hesitant to say, oh yeah, I'm going to get, I'm going to change, I'm going to present this differently and I'm going to do this and that uh, because of what people are used to. And in my short tenure here, people are not always used to a lot of change. So we went slow. I, last year I was able to input a paper, you know, a cover sheet, all the people, their positions, and who, what, when, and where, so you could have an idea of how many, you know, and then you know, again, two point two and a half percent for, you know, these kinds of raises. And so that you can also understand that a lot of our money is not discretionary. It's set costs. But you know, so I was really hard to commit to anything in front of 24 of my bosses. But then as I reflected, I thought, I get it. I get what you're asking, but I'd like to work in a small, a smaller group of, mm -hmm. of my bosses and have them um, advise me on my goals. And maybe if I can explain to one person on each of the five school committees that I have, which is a lot, mm -hmm. uh, what it is I'm doing and how I am um, reaching this goal and how I'm doing this element and how I'm doing this, and that maybe they could help inform the school committee, you know, better than me writing a book that hmm, not too many people are going to read and, you know, it, it's, it's not as meaningful. Um, so anyway, yeah. I'm, I'm asking for this. The other school committees have agreed, okay. and I asked for Greg. Um, just he's such a methodical thinker, and I thought uh, his input. Mm -hmm. you know, not are that you, everybody else's isn't, but. <laughs> are you uh, yeah. game for this? Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Thank you. So um, yeah, and you know my my uh, you know. Two cents on it is in terms of the goals stuff is is um, um, I guess beyond the um, the goals the way that you would expect us to evaluate you on those at the end of the you know at the end of the year and and so for example because I, I mean I've always found this superintendent evaluation process to be frustrating because I feel like I'm commenting on things that I really I don't know uh, how that the superintendent has really performed on that and I agree with you like at the, at the, at the high level whatever this school does or doesn't achieve I mean the buck stops <laughs> with you um, or, you know or all the schools in the district um, but then you know what's happening, you know, what, you know, really was within your, you know, in terms of things that are, you know, you're setting out to do that you're saying, this is, you know, my priorities and how I'm going to go about it. Uh, and then, you know, and then evidence and th that that was, you know, happened or, you know, I have, I still have, ch you know, op challenges and opportunities in this area or whatever. Um, and, and some of that, might, you know, for me feels like, you know, getting um, against, you know, stuff from you, the people who, who kind of report directly to you, you know, in terms of here are going to be, you know, here are the things I'm working with, you know, the principals on and my other people in my, you know, administrative team, curriculum, special ed, and so on, um, you know, here are the things that I'm doing with them this year, and then at the end of the year, you know, how did that go? And you know, maybe feedback from them too, because like that's I feel like, uh, 
you know, I'm so, I'm such a like distant, you know, observer of this uh, at best. Um, and yet that team, I, you know, I don't know how, I, I'm just surprised that that isn't part of the superintendent evaluation. Well, I think it's, it's hard because when you are in a position where you need to say no, mm -hmm. um, no, they might not be happy. And I can, you know, again, that so, some people are going to be, it's not that they're going to be happy with everything. <laughs> that their boss, you know, did or said, okay. but, you know, we would, you know, we can... Evaluate principles, you know. So I think, I think that's a slippery slope. I see, I, yeah, I think, I think teachers should evaluate principles, but... I think some ex explanation, too, about how, where the categories come from, because I know some is, like, from the state, right? Like they're, they're all from the state. Yeah. Everything I so do So I is think an explanation state. of that would have been... I sent an email to everyone. Well, yeah, I mean, at the joint meeting, like, when... We were going around and around. I didn't, yeah. No, I, I, think I, that's just, just, I have thought everybody knew the system because it's been in place since 2012. Yeah. But I don't think so. I think we have newer people, and I think yeah. people just didn't. And, um, but, you know, we can rectify, you know, we can take care of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, and, the, and they need to understand that their job, too, involves evaluating your performance. Mm -hmm. So if you have a list of strategic initiatives that are the things that you're trying to do and you drop the ball on something that's not on that list, they can still say that in, in their evaluation. You know, it's not like uh, this is the list of things that I'm doing for my job and if I do a great job on these, right. you know, you can't count anything else against me. That's not what it's about. You know, so some of, some of what got thrown out there was just really, uh, we, we do want to separate the taking out the trash day job stuff. Mm -hmm budgets, teacher evaluations, principal stuff from the strategic initiatives, what's your three to five year plan on special ed and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a matter of, of helping the school community members also understand. And, and that's, that's kind of where I am. We're all working for the same thing mm -hmm. and I am doing the work, but it's hard to articulate it. And then I thought, well, I'll put it all in a book and you'll be able to see it. And that, that didn't really help. And um, so I was, uh, the, uh, the two chairs, the union chair and the regional chair, well, the regional chair said simple next year, go well, simple, transparent but simple. Mm -hmm. But um, maybe it was too simple, I, I don't know. I did follow other people's leads, uh, but that's fine. I've got eight I, pages I, now. I think it's, it's, <laughs> I, it's really tricky because it's hard. It's, it's, um, you know, I mean, you say your bosses, but it's not, the, you know, or your constituents in a way or whatever it is, but, but it's not your typical situation because, you know, we see you once a month, you know, it's not like, you know, you see Ben, you know, yeah. right, all the time, you see your team all the time. And, and so it's not, it, it's really hard for us um, to engage and, and, you know, understand um, you know, your work. And it's so, so, um, and I, so I, I say like, I, I think it's not like, oh gee, you, you know, you failed at that. Like, it's like, I feel like I've never been happy <laughs> with the superintendent evaluation process as long as I've been on the school committee. I've never felt like uh, I was in a process that, that, felt like it could succeed. <laughs> it's a very complex job having five school committees, yeah. having 24 school committee members trying yeah. to make sure they all know what you're doing right. and asking for that level of trust yeah. that I do know what I'm doing right. and I'm very capable right. and but I'm on the camera and I got 24 people and I'm just trying to say, well, I, I do that, yeah. but um, I'm hoping that my superintendent's advisory committee will help me uh, be yeah. able to approach, you know, that yeah. kind of, you know, understanding for you. So you really do have an idea of what it is I'm doing and, and how I'm dealing with it. Uh, and that's that's what I'm asking for. Yeah. And I appreciate that. But I need to follow. Okay. Um, so, uh, we have a motion to approve recommendation from the superintendent to convene an advisory subcommittee 
and to uh, presumably uh, not approve uh, Greg to be uh, Greg Gottschalk to be on that advisory committee to meet roughly three times a year to advise her on goal development, mid-cycle, and year-end progress on meeting those. So moved. All right. Second. All right. All in favor? All right. Unanimous. All right. Thank you. Um, committees. Um, do you have any? The question I have was... Frontier, had a Frontier group the last Frontier meeting? Uh, the last Frontier meeting. Was there one? Yes, there was. Yeah. Um, <coughs> you have to give me Sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, did anyone here go to the MASC, MASS conference? No. I do have some information for you. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Um, well, do you want to do... Uh, you're, ready. you're ready? All right. Okay. Go, go. All right. The last meeting, uh, there was discussion about the Christian Lane property and uh, a revised timeline for submitting the RFP to, to move the property and trying to fit it in with Waitley's town meeting. Because uh, if, if it happened earlier, it gave them a better chance to plan it out what to do with the process. We had presentations for trips to Washington, D.C., uh, to Italy and Greece. Uh, and then we had a lot of discussion about the facilities and the possible bond request. Uh, and then we went into, uh, we heard about the playoffs. Uh, there was a soccer game going on outside during it. I believe they were making <laughs> updates on the scores. That's nice. Um, and then we had to move into uh, we had the superintendent's advisory committee we discussed and voted that in. And then we had to uh, release the executive session minutes, which we'll have to do here too. Okay. Oh, yeah. We have that. That's it. It was a lovely meeting. All right. Thank you. Um, Ben, you want to do the principal report? Sure. Absolutely. Um, on October 24th, uh, we hosted an engaging flute and percussion duo of Zara Lawler and Paul Fadul. Um, Zara played the flute and Paul played the marimba. Um, they performed at all of the elementary schools over the course of the week. Um, our PTO helped to sponsor the event, and we also, um, there was a grant through the Chamber Music America Residency Partnership Program that helped to bring them on. Um, very engaging performance. They performed a total of five times um, across all grade levels here at Sunderland. Then the next day, um, on October 25th, our fourth grade kicked off uh, our Cafe Sun for the year. Um, in the past, we've, uh, with our combined lunches of grades three and four, um, grades one and two, grades five and six, we've had students from multiple grade levels performing during Cafe Sun, but the interest has just been so high for the performances that we're limiting each Cafe Sun to one grade to make sure we have enough time to fit the per uh, performances in. Um, over the summer, I was approached by the Sunderland Water District and they uh, are generously offering some money to go towards a school project. Um, and we were able to kind of use it at our discretion. Um, seeing that it is coming uh, from the water district, we wanted to put that money towards something involving water. Well, last school year, we started a school vegetable garden and students across all grade levels were in charge of um, planting and tending to the garden. And so the next part of that project is to design a water capture system using the pavilion um, out back. Um, so it will include <coughs> capture, filtration, uh, transport, and storage. So that we're kind of a, uh, um, tackling a real world problem in, in, in water transport. 
So the, the plan is f um, each grade level is going to be in charge of some different phase of that project with the older students um, kind of overseeing um, what each grade level is doing. We're going to bring in, look to bring in some local engineers um, to collaborate with. Uh, we've reached out to the uh, UMass Color Guard um, just for some volunteer work. Um, uh, they, were, they were here for our Veterans Day ceremony and they expressed interest in uh, helping out for the project as well. So um, it's, good. it's a very big project, and, but we're hoping uh, to have it completed by the end of the school year, at least the beginning phases. That's great. And then uh, finally, um, last Thursday, November 9th, we held our annual Veterans Day observance ceremony. This was the ninth consecutive year students have participated in this uh, ceremony. Uh, the event this year featured a flag folding demonstration, guest speaker, um, the flag was uh, lowered to half staff while taps was played by two Frontier students, Ella Dean and Phelan Kosky. And this year um, featured a, uh, we had a uh, flyover by two military helicopters during the middle of the ceremony, so that was pretty neat. After the ceremony, we always invite the veterans back to our school to visit classrooms, um, read, Ask, uh, answer questions from the students, and then uh, eat lunch with the kids as well. And so that's what's been happening. Upcoming events, we have third grade Cafe Sun tomorrow. Um, prior to our PTO meeting tomorrow night, we have started an early childhood um, playground committee. So we're in the beginning phases of um, kind of revamping the early childhood playground. Um, so Tracy Sacri, who um, was one of the lead chairs for the um, rear playground, is going to come and kind of do a presentation for us and kind of walk us through what uh, everything that went into the building of the back playground. Uh, school closes at noon the day before Thanksgiving, and then the following week we have our sixth grade doing Niveka. We have a Barnes and Noble book fair. Uh, picture retake day, report cards are going out, fifth grade Cafe Sun. Um, local musician Tyler Conroy is going to be putting on an assembly for our students in the middle of December. We have our winter concert and then uh, school closes for holiday break um, December 22nd, which is a half day of school. So lots going on. Any questions? the Mass Association of School Committees and the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents had their annual joint conference last week. Um, unfortunately, due to a health concern, I, I wasn't able to attend. These are some of the people that attended from our district. Some of the workshops they attended including social emotional learning, building and managing relationships and negotiations, special education transportation class, measures of student learning and growth, college and career readiness, uh, MIAA um, challenges and successes in 21st century leadership. So, uh, from all reports, uh, it was it was very informative and uh, a nice time. Uh, I wasn't there. <laughs> all students in grades three to eight took the MCAS two, and uh, on the computer, uh, they so they made that transition. Louise Law will be here in December to share those results with us uh, at the school committee. And um, I'm very proud of Sunderland School. Uh, I attended uh, the, uh, a meeting with the Massachusetts Association of Regional Schools last week where the results of a study entitled Supporting Student and Community Success, Updating the Structure and Finance of Massachusetts Regional School Districts. Uh, it was reported by the Office of the State Auditor, Suzanne Buck, and I've included a handout in your file. And uh, one of the, uh, there's many recommendations. It's not a binding um, study, it's, it's, it's quite extensive, but they've recommended many things. And the reason why I'm bringing it to you, even though it's a regional school and we're not a regional school in Sunderland, is um, because it does impact Frontier and 
Uh, next month, I will be going to the Frontier uh, School Committee and asking them uh, to approve um, my sending a letter to the, uh, the lawmakers in Boston, the senators, and um, whomever has a, a piece in this, in requesting that the state uh, fund regional transportation to the extent that they had agreed to, that the law says 100%. They, they have not been um, funding that at 100%. I think we're up to 60, maybe high 60s right now. And uh, as you know, transportation is very expensive. And becoming a regional, uh, a regional district that does help transportation and stuff. But I just want you to be aware of what's going on at the regional level as well. And our new director of food service is Mary DeLusa. And she previously worked at Deerfield um, as the cafeteria manager. She was an assistant manager at Whole Foods, and she also was in food service at American International College. She's actually transitioning to the new position this week. She's all alone. Today was her first day, and um, I think she will be able to reach people. She certainly has the, uh, the, uh, the personality to uh, get people to buy in and to you know, work on her. Uh, to work with her and on her. One, one, one of the uh, first steps she's taken is um, having the kids help to design the menu. Um, so ballots went out to our sixth grade students yesterday for the upcoming December menu. Uh, so we'll see what they come up with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Right. I mean, um, it'll be great maybe like uh, in, in the spring yeah. to have her come yeah, she could do that for, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, give like some of her vision for. She and I, um, we're also looking to decrease the amount of time students spend in the lunch line. Um, so there's a couple extra salad bars in the district um, that we're looking to bring into the Sunderland kitchen. Um, but first we need to get a smaller milk cooler. Um, so that's the plan. I'm hoping that she'll be able to make smoothies here. Yeah. You know, there's so much fruit that comes in, and the kids sometimes hesitate to eat all that fruit, but mm -hmm. the smoothies, you know, it's just fruit, yep. and they're good. <laughs> so that's all mm -hmm. I have. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, so um, it's this uh, executive session. And let's see, I would entertain a motion to enter into executive session under Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A7, in order to comply with the open meeting law for the purpose of approving and releasing executive session minutes. So moved. All right. Second? All right. Um, all in favor? Mm -hmm. Do you have to roll call? I do. Oh, that's right. All right. Um, Douglas Fulton? Yes. Keith McFarland? Yes. Greg Gottschalk? Yes. And Maisie Shaw? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Good night.